Hey everyone, finally back today with another episode of Mopar News. It's been pretty quiet from the brand this year, but here's a recap of the past few months. So we've got the Durango SRT392 Alchemy, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition, new cars from Alfa Romeo and Maserati, Jeep Wagoneer S, some auctions, and more. So let's begin. So we'll start with something Hemi related, the 2024 Dodge Durango SRT392 Alchemy, or Alchemy. Just like the Charger and Challenger had last year, the Dodge Durango will also get a series of last call Hemi models, beginning with this SRT392 Alchemy. Production will end at the end of 2024 for the 5.7 liter, 6.4 liter, and 6.2 liter Hemi power Durangos. So that means they will make 2025 models, and that year is expected to be the final year for the current generation Durango, with a completely new model anticipated for 2026 and beyond. So this Alchemy is the first last call model announced, based on the SRT392 Premium models. The SRT392 Premium starts at $86,200 US, and this version adds $3,595 more for the package, with just 1,000 units produced, split equally between four colors. So that's 250 in Diamond Black, Destroyer Gray, Vapor Gray, and White Knuckle. No word on the Canadian models or production. The name references alchemy, as an alchemist is a person that attempts to change ordinary metals into gold, and Dodge has seemingly tried to incorporate that into the visuals of the Durango. The key features of this package include 20 by 10 inch satin black Forge SRT wheels, yellow Brembo calipers, satin black 392 vinyl fender decals with yellow accents, honeycomb textured dual racing stripes with yellow accent borders, black exhaust tips, and midnight metallic grille and liftgate badges. Inside the seats have yellow and silver stitching with the 392 logo embroidered, as well as a leather and suede steering wheel with white backlit SRT logo and forged carbon fiber interior accents. Dodge is reopening the horsepower locator on their Dodge Garage website, and certain dealers will get allocations for this. Another limited edition would be the 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 Final Edition, sending off this beast into the sunset. Jeep is making 3,700 of these, with 3,300 going to the US, 300 going to Canada, and another 100 for global export. The price is a massive $100,000 US, or $129,510 for the Canadian model. The main draw here is the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 under the hood with 470 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Jeep claims a 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds and the quarter mile in 13 seconds flat with this Wrangler. They're also built for off-roading with a 48 to 1 crawl ratio, 8,000 pound capacity worn winch, and Mopar heavy duty rock sliders. This final edition includes unique hood and front fender decals and 17 inch bronze wheels with 35 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain tires. Inside, there are luxurious black Napa leather seats with Mayan gold stitching. Each final edition is also marked with a special shifter medallion and swing gate plate. Sticking with Jeep, the popular high-impact color Tuscadero is back on the 2024 Jeep Wrangler. Jeep had used this before on the late 2021 and early 2022 Wrangler models, making over 30,000 in this color, which is named after the Happy Days character Arthur Fonzi Fonzarelli's girlfriend, Carol Pinky Tuscadero. So Tuscadero joins other colors like Anvil, Earl, Firecracker Red, Granite Crystal, Silver Zenith, Hydro Blue, Bright White, and Black. The vivid pink color will be available on Sport, Sport S, Willys, Sahara, Rubicon, Rubicon X, and even 392 models for an additional $895 in the US and $695 for the Canadian market. Now over to the other Stellantis brands, Alfa Romeo and Maserati. Both of these brands are offering some new stunning vehicles, so let's check them out. Alfa Romeo is offering the 33 Stradale. They're only making 33 units at an insane price of 1.7 million euros or around 1.8 million dollars US. Customers have a choice of electric or gas powertrains. The gas version is rear wheel drive and comes with the Maserati twin turbo 3 liter Natuno V6 engine with 620 plus horsepower, 8 speed transmission and electronic limited slip differential. The battery electric version will make 750 plus horsepower with an estimated range of 280 miles, a top speed of 206 miles an hour, and a 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. Production is scheduled to start this June with the first delivery of the 33 Stradale scheduled to take place in December 2024. The new Maserati release is the drop top version of the Gran Turismo called the Gran Cabrio. The canvas roof retracts in just 13.9 seconds at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour and closes just as fast. This also has the Natuno V6 engine, producing 542 horsepower with an 8-speed auto and all-wheel drive. 
0 to 60 happens in 3.6 seconds with a top speed of 196 miles an hour. So you might have almost the same engine as the 33 Stradale, but the expected price tag on this car is substantially less, just over $200,000. This one will be at dealers by the summer in the US. Another thing I thought was worth mentioning is that so far the Dodge Hornet really seems to be a failure, at least in terms of sales. If you're wondering why you've only seen a handful on the road, that's because it currently tops the list as the slowest selling vehicle right now. Initially it did well on the first day that sales opened, but now the demand has dried up and the Hornet has a 480 day supply of inventory, which measures the average amount of time in days that a company or warehouse holds the inventory before selling or shipping it. There are also 13,110 Hornets that are sitting at dealers right now in the US. I might get more into why and how this vehicle is such a failure in a full video, but the Hornet is not in the right segment. It's competing as a compact utility vehicle, or CUV, and Dodge boasts best-in-class performance, which of course Dodge is known for, features like the power shot and standard all-wheel drive, but CUV customers could not care less about that, and they want an economical car that provides good value. And the Hornet doesn't do that with an average price of $41,114 US. Speaking of supply of inventory, I always find it interesting to see which zombie cars get sold, a term that refers to discontinued models selling brand new units long after the discontinuation date. So somehow in 2023, there were 36 Dodge Journeys sold, 28 Fiat 124 Spiders, 27 Dodge Grand Caravans, 16 Fiat 500s, 7 Fiat 500Ls, 4 Chrysler 200s, 3 Dodge Darts, 2 Dodge Vipers, 2 Chrysler Town and Countries, and 1 single Jeep Patriot and 1 single Alfa Romeo 4C, all sold brand new to customers across various US dealers. Next up is some talk on the Jeep Wagoneer S. This new 2025 model could be revealed to the US market as soon as July 2024. Jeep has released some teaser videos and photos which I'll show on screen, and this is the all-electric version of the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer models that are currently sold as gas models obviously. Jeep is actually marketing this as a crossover, and it will be the first all-electric vehicle on the Stella Large platform. This should use a similar 800 volt system to the future Dodge Charger. Jeep says the SUV will have at least 600 horsepower and will be able to do 0-60 to 60 in just 3.5 seconds with a range of 435 miles or 700 kilometers. You can tell by the pictures that this doesn't really look anything like the boxy traditional designs of the current Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer and instead it has a new take on the 7 slot grille with LED trace lighting and a floating spoiler in the rear. Moving over to Ram, the 1500 Classic returns again for 2024, marking a 16th year in production. This might remain one of the only ways to get into a Hemi-powered Ram with the 2025 shifting to the twin-turbocharged 3-liter Hurricane inline 6-cylinder engine. For 2024, it does seem like the regular cab models are being discontinued, leaving the 4-door quad cab and crew cab models, with quad cab models featuring a 6-foot 4-inch box, and the crew cab sporting a 5-foot 7-inch box. The engines aren't changing, so the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 has 305 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque, and the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 has 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque, both paired with an 8-speed automatic. It looks like the trim levels will include the entry-level Tradesman and the sportier Warlock. I'll close off this video by checking out some various Mopar auctions that went down since January 2024. Due to time, I'm not going over each car in depth, so I'll very briefly cover the car and the price it sold for. If you do want more details, I'll post the auction links in the description. At Bring a Trailer in California, there's this 2001 Dodge Dakota RT Club Cab with a shaker hood, the 5.9 liter V8, and just 14,000 miles on it. This sold for $16,600. At Mecham Glendale, there's a 1967 Plymouth Hemi GTX convertible, one of only 10 automatics for this year, finished in bright blue metallic with 73,000 miles on it, sold for $156,750. At Bring a Trailer South Carolina, there's a 2023 Dodge Challenger SRT Demon 170, numbered 1,824 out of 3,301, painted in tour red, sold for $164,000. At Scottsdale Barrett Jackson, there's a 1968 Dodge Charger Dumbo, customized with a supercharged direct connection Elephant 7 liter Hemi, numbered 50 out of 100 from the factory. This car sold for $275,000. At Scottsdale Barrett Jackson, there's a 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda painted in in violet. There were only 114 of these powerhouse vehicles produced, and this is one of 48 equipped with Chrysler's Torque Flight automatic transmission. It sold for 
At Mecham Kissimmee, there was a 1971 Plymouth Hemi Cuda in Rally Red, one of 108 produced with 15,000 miles on it, sold for 660000 At the Amelia Auction, there's a 1954 Dodge Fire Arrow 4. Designer of Chrysler Corporation, Virgil Exner, created the forward look styling, including this Dodge Fire Arrow concept series, a collaboration between Chrysler and the Italian design house Carrozzeria Gia. The car has regimental red paint and a 4-liter red Ram Hemi V8 with 150 horsepower. Not surprisingly, this rare fully operational concept sold for $1.1 million. And last and most expensive, also at Mecham Kissimmee, this 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda convertible in Lemon Twist, one of just 14 Hemi Cuda convertibles produced this year with 26,000 miles on it, sold for a whopping $2.145 million. So that's it for this episode of Mopar News. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Also going to try to post a lot more content a lot more frequently than I've been doing recently. But anyways, that's it for this one. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.